tonight. We're so happy to see a crowd here like this. So if you can't see this flag, I have a flag on the far wall behind you, okay? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chairman Papa Holzer? Here. Vice Chair Anafrio? Here. Secretary Siena? Here. Janet Balsamo? Here. Carolyn Candelora? Here. Vincent Mace? Cynthia Rice? Here. Visitors comments? It's been limited to the agenda. Do we have any visitors? Student representatives? Introductions? Sure. Hi, my name is Caitlin May. And I'm Patrick Mike Um, So Pat and I would like to first thank Mr. Gwebs and Mr. Schoonmaker for offering us this opportunity to speak about all of the wonderful things going on at North Brantford High School. Um, so first to begin, as a part of the post high school planning process, college admission personnel have been visiting NBHS throughout the month of September and October. Juniors and seniors have been provided access upon their request to attend presentations and meet with representatives. Guidance personnel have also continued with senior conferences that include parents. The annual financial aid application workshop took place on October 3rd with two sessions offered at 5 and 6.30 p.m. Parents signed up ahead of time with Mrs. DeTour, NBHS guidance director, taking the lead with this important workshop. Additionally, motivational speaker Ed Slokowski addressed the entire nation, entire school, <laughs> at the close of the chair week during the morning of October 5th. Mr. Slokowski tours the nation and is a motivational speaker for businesses, high schools, and events. His presentation focused upon transition, decision-making skills, and post-high school plans. Along with that, we had the annual T-Bird Fair for 8th grade parents and 8th grade students. And that took place on Thursday, October 4th, during the Spirit Week with video presentations, tours, and an activity fair included. Several students volunteered during the day and during the evening. Mr. Buds and Ms. Cavalero took lead with this important event once again. Also, uh, 19, 19 members of the MBHS uh, music program performed in the Shoreline Music Festival at the um, at Kagenchak High School on October 11th. This special event features the best of the best musicians um, from the entire conference, and uh, they ended up winning the entire co conference. Along with that, or, no, I'm sorry. They didn't, they didn't win the conference, that's the other thing. <laughs> East Haven and uh, North Brantford High School Co-op Marching Band took first place during the 25th Annual Class Band Festival at Norwich Free Academy during the weekend of September 29th. And additional competitors are scheduled at Cheshire High School, Lyman High School, Rockville High School, Finch High School, and at New Britain Stadium for the U.S. Nationals. All taking place on Saturdays. Great job, guys. Um, Thank so you. <laughs> First one, first one, before we applaud them, I'm going to do a quick, quick intro. Obviously, we weren't here last month, uh, so we didn't have an opportunity to formally recognize you. We have biographies of our two students, uh, Caitlin May, um, Patrick, pronounce your last name. Mike Coney. Mike Coney. Mike Coney. Or our great representatives of our high school, two seniors, both in National Honor Society, both have been involved with numerous AP courses. Um, they are both interested in medicine uh, upon completion of their four years here. They're very involved in, in sports and leadership opportunities, so you really are a great voice and you represent all of the good that's happening in our high school. So welcome, we're very happy you're here. You both do a great job today.
you can sit there. Okay, then I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the August 15th, 2018 Board of Education special meeting as submitted. Can I have a second? <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the August 16th, 2018 Board of Education meeting as submitted. Second. All second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Who's abstain? Mm -hmm. I just said it. She is. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the October 2nd, 2018 <coughs> Board of Education special meeting as submitted. Discussion? I think we need a roll call on this. I think there were other extensions as well. Okay. Chairman Papa Holter? Yes. Vice Chair Onofrio? Yes. Secretary Sienna? Yes. Gianna Balsamo? Yes. Carolyn Candelora? Abstain. Cynthia Rice? Yes. Personnel. Designations? None. Appoint appointments? None. I do have a, a list of newly hired uh, <coughs> folks. They are certified employees. I'll pass them around. I'm going to read quickly to them as they do come around. There are three, six, seven new employees uh, listed in front of you from the intermediate school, Geelong, TBS, and the high school. And we're very pleased, as you know, um, we did get a late start. Uh, on the hiring process, and we feel that we have uh, really uh, been able to bring some outstanding educators into the district, and they've hit the ground running. Um, so they're listed there. If you have any questions at this time, it, it lists their um, step where they came in, their background, uh, and their university where they studied. If there are no questions, we'll move on. These will table until next month. Yes. Superintendent. Okay, thank you. Uh, it, it's truly a pleasure. This is probably uh, the best part of my day, the best part of my night. Who knows if I get better Red Sox win tonight? Uh, right, Yvonne? That being said, we're here to recognize our 2017 state championship field hockey team. Uh, last year, 77 teams competed in the S, M, and L uh, brackets in field hockey, and they range in size. So in class S, which were the champions, you had to have fewer than 416 girls in your school. So being a small high school with 575 students right now, if you cut that in half, you probably have 250 female participants. So even in class S, we were playing against schools that were much larger, like a Waterford High School, who uh, has probably 800 students. Um, but we were able to not only win the state championship, but we were undefeated. And our program was unique that um, Coach Noon, our head coach, always schedules games outside of the shoreline against much larger teams that do very well in the L and M bracket. So when our girls get to the, the playoffs, which we get to every year, uh, they are really well prepared uh, to, to be playing at their best and have played the best of the year. Um, I'm not going to go on and on about Coach Noon because um, there's, there's too much to say and not enough time. Um, trust me. I want to have Coach Noon come up, um, Coach Conley, Coach Boltman, and Coach Galdensi. This is an amazing group.
is Lynn, Lynn Rear, I know, had a note that I'm going to read in a minute when the girls come up and circulate. Frank Lentone and Lynn Rear from, uh, from the Ed Foundation and from um, Matt's Mission were the ones that put this together and purchased these rings for the girls. They have been unbelievable in their support of all activities uh, in North Brantford of our students and our teams and things that we cannot do at times. They always step up. So I want to personally thank Franklin Tony and Lynn Reardon from Matt's Mission and from the North Brantford Ed Foundation for their continued support of our programs and our school system and our children, most importantly. That being said, Mr. Gloods is going to call the names. The girls are going to come up. We are going to do a, a, a photo shot up here together. I know it's going to be tight, but girls, as you get your rings, as you could please walk and shake the hands of the board members, this is truly what they are here to do. They are here to give you the means to be your best in the classroom, on the field, um, in any performance we talked about, the marching band. To give you the opportunities to become your best and go out and do great things. And you're such a great example of what a comprehensive program, a school system that truly cares about you looks like. And it, it starts from the top with your coach, and you know that, and it goes all the way through down. Who played for coach, who was on a state championship team two years with Coach Noon. Um, th this, is, this is a program. This is what this is. Um, so congratulations. It's an honor to have you here tonight. So that being said, Mr. Blood, we can start. Members of the 2017 Hockey uh, Championship. Uh, Amy Rauch. Ava Galdenzi.
Melanie Norman.
Yeah, it doesn't say the one song. You should all feel just read something from this reading. Why do you say, the state game was amazing, and I am very proud of Babby and every player on the field hockey team. It is an honor for Matt's mission to support and acknowledge our North Rambert field hockey state champs. Way to go, girls.
Hayden Foley. Gianna Gasseri. So, 
hold your part, or look at Mr. O'Rourke to the right, the gentleman waving, and hold your pictures, big smiles, and then look at mom and dad. Cheese. Good. Parents, still set. Look towards the left. <laughs> to the left, to the left. <laughs> Are we good? To the right. Over there in the corner. We have a proud dad. We're good. Well set. Okay. Thank you guys so much. that are donated by DACO Food and the staff is able to take a uh, trip into New York City. So those monies always go to the food pantry. So I will be making that donation to uh, our food pantry uh, early next week. That's so I want to thank What is DACO not, tr not charge? And DACO people? gives us the free bus to go down to New York City. Um, oh, and that's then very they nice. either bring a canned good or make a monetary donation and it goes right to the soup kitchen. Right. So they'll be doing that again. What month that? Usually it's the same. <laughs> Although the last, this last year, I think it was kicked back a couple months for some reason. Okay. So we're going to trip coming up. We also have to um, approve of the two donations that were made. I hope that you approve them because I've already purchased the rings. So, <laughs> so I'll make We don't want to give the rings back. No, they were very beautiful <laughs> rings. They were I believe. Yes. We're out of luck. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the donation of $2,000 from Matt's Mission Fund to offset the cost of championship rings for the NBHS field hockey team with grateful appreciation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I skipped the discussion. I'm sorry, but I didn't really think anything. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion to approve the donation of $2,000 from the North Brantford Education Foundation to offset the cost of the purchase of the championship rings for the NBHS field hockey team with grateful appreciation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. And thank you again to, to Franklin Tone and to Lynn Reardon for their continued support. Uh, the board briefs are enclosed. Um, I'm not going to read through them. You've had a chance to look at them. They, they've been very busy getting the buildings open, all the great happenings going on. So um, thank you to our administrators for their, their great work and everything that's going on in the buildings. We had a letter from the fire marshal. I'm not going to read that letter. It was. Um, a, a synopsis of what had to be done for the opening on August 29th. There was a list of things that we had to check off on our list. I want to thank the uh, custodial crew and uh, Bill Chody, uh administrators for making sure that all of the buildings were safe and secure and ready to go on opening day, and they achieved that. So um, thank you so much. Exhibit G, I'm going to ask you to turn to. I'm going to read a quick letter, and I do have Ms. Artis here this evening. I'm going to have her stand after I read this letter. And uh, if, if you're not aware of what Unified Sports is, I strongly encourage you to get out and take an opportunity to either go to a middle school or a high school event. Diane Artais has been spearheading this for the past several years, and it's amazing what she's able to do um, with our students. And, and I'm just going to read, Dear Diane, on behalf of the CIC, I want to express our congratulations for being recently recognized as a Banner Unified Championship Champion School. North Brantford High School is one of only 132 schools nationally 
and 12 in Connecticut to receive the honor this year. Your commitment to unified sports, inclusive youth leadership, and whole school engagement are characteristics that make your school stand out from so many others. Special Olympics will be sending us your championship banner in the next couple of weeks. We'd like to make the banner presentation to you at the Unified Leadership Summit on November 30th. On behalf of our unified team here at CIC, I want to thank you for all the terrific work you do for the unified teammates. It is through your commitment and dedication that barriers of division are broken, understanding and acceptance of differences are eliminated, and a brighter world is made for all of our kids. And those are powerful lines. Mm -hmm. I, I love how you authored that. You are certainly deserving to be recognized as a Banner Unified Championship School, and that's from George Sinan, who is the director of um, Special Olympics Unified Sports. So, Diane, could you please come out and do this? on April 24th to see Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway. Uh, I, I know that the, the young uh, man uh, that was reading tonight and he was crossing over between our shoreline music competition at Cottage Chalk High School. Now I'm messing up. Cottage Chalk High School. 19 students to be recognized by, uh, from North Brantford is an amazing number of musicians to make that team from the shoreline, usually it's 8 to 10 from a school, for us to have 19 is off the charts. Uh, second part of that, the marching band that co-ops with East Haven and North Brantford competes weekly around the state of Connecticut, and they have done unbelievable. I had an opportunity to see them uh, this past Friday practicing over at East Haven, and, and the time, the energy, and the effort that goes into putting together marching bands, where we're not huge in number, they are incredible to see. So we're hoping we're going to get an opportunity to get them at an event so you'll have a chance to see them march and perform in the flags and all of that together. So that's just a, a thank you and a recognition to Katie and, and East Haven and what they're doing and to our music program, which is off the charts as well. So thank you. How come we don't march at homecoming? How come we don't march at homecoming? How just most of the participants are. So, sorry, that's totally off. <laughs> Most of the participants are from East Haven High School, okay. and Katie can speak to this. When they approached us, there were some key instruments in the marching band that they had competed in a number of competitions, and they had kids graduate. And we had some of those kids who played those instruments, and that was an opportunity. I think the first year, was about eight kids from North Bradford High School that participated. So the vast majority of kids are from East Haven High. Um, but I don't know okay, if you want to add to that. Yes, no, I appreciate that. It, it's true, the majority of the students are in Stephen. Um, there's a lot of equipment moving that goes this way, including a huge trailer that you yeah. can trucks get here and things like that. But we used to actually play East Haven in football, and we did do a combined halftime show with that band on that event. So hopefully we'll get another game either in that division, or we are doing a field trip actually next Friday with our 8th grade band and our high school band over at East Haven during the day, where our students are going to get to see the marching band. Oh, cool. Great. So thank you for your support of all of that. I really do appreciate it. So if we play East Haven again, and they're 5-0 in football right now, so we're not playing them anytime soon. <laughs> we're going to wait for that cycle to roll out. Thank you, Katie. Um, October enrollment. Mr. Winnick. Well, this, I mean, this is just for your information. It's a snapshot of October 1, which is what we use for all the budget um, projections. Um, 
the numbers actually for October 1st came in very close to the projections, uh, but I can't take that much credit because it was, you see, we're down um, 17 in kindergarten and we're up um, most notably at the high school in the number of eighth graders who went to, who stayed in district to go to ninth grade. Um, so those two swings sort of offset each other. Just uh, recognizing the efforts that we've made over the last mm -hmm. two to three years of uh, getting the middle school students into the high school and doing a, um, a video for them, having the parents come in and then doing an open house. We had eight members of, last, of the current freshman class um, go elsewhere this year. So all we retained That's the lowest the number in a long time. So we're going in the right direction. We had a number of um, students return to the high school as well. So that's why you have that little delay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are Let's get attacked by the more, uh, more, more good news. Graduation follow up item G. 100% of last year's graduating class um, walked uh, at graduation. So Fantastic. that's that. that I don't want to get too caught up in, but uh, that group last year, 94% went to college, 100% went across stage. So um, well done to their teachers uh, from now pre-K all the way through uh, preparing those students and working with those students and guiding those students and supporting those students. And a, and a shout out to all of them who I'm sure are doing great things this year. Uh, our board of head spotlight tonight. I'm going to keep moving right along. Uh, we have Ms. Daniel here from the math department, heads up the math department. She's going to talk about uh, a program that uh, with Ms. Wooten, I assume. Or um, I'm just going to be her being a white show. Okay. <laughs> they're going to talk about uh, some practices that are happening at, <coughs> happening at the high school, um, working specifically with our math students uh, towards mastery learning and the ability to um, work on concept, concepts that they may not. Uh, have mastered the first time and how it, it spirals and loops around and it's a lot of outreach from our staff to work with these students on these weakness areas to get them to to reassess and to master uh, and moving forward those of you who are math phobic or don't like math i think you'll understand and appreciate what's happening um, through the leadership of the standing that being said um, this is a PowerPoint. Ms. Sam, can I have you turn the light, just the light over your head, please? Thank you. together 
and then mail those out at the onset of the two school years to make sure that the parents were on board with this because they do play a piece of this. In order for the kid to um, take an assessment over that's eligible, the parent has to sign off on it and the kid has to go through a certain amount of steps before resubmitting the work for the assessment, which she'll, she'll run through. So um, I wanted all of you to know that it was something that had happened over the past couple of years and it was not a really planful way. It's been very successful. She's collected data. So this year during our leadership team meeting, we provide her the opportunity to share this with other department members as maybe as a guideline for other departments want to do the same thing. Thank you. This is standing up goes above and beyond. I remember she helped my son and went above and beyond the call of duty how many years ago? I don't even know how many years ago. Eight, seven, eight years ago. I mean, she's very dedicated and wants to make sure these kids master what they need to. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Francine Stanio, and I'm at the high school. I've been there, this is my 13th year, and I think it's my fifth year as uh, the team leader in the mathematics uh, program or department. And so I want to present to you the North Granford High School Mathematics Department's Mastery Practices Program. Okay. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the need for mastery practices. At the very beginning of the school year, of every school year, all our teachers talk to their classes on the first day of school about what it takes to be successful in that particular course of study. In the math department, we talk specifically about you know, having your homework, um, being sure to get to class on time, all those particulars. And we do that right from the beginning of, uh, this, of the school year. We talk especially about what it really takes to be successful in our classes. And what that really means is putting our efforts, our, us as teachers, into every single student and letting those students know that we are there for them. So if we have a student like the boy in the picture there who's you know, frustrated and struggling, to let them know that we are there to help them. Okay, and there I am. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and so our focus becomes basically um, exactly that, making sure that as they go along, especially in the math department where everything is so linear, that they understand today's topics so that tomorrow they can be successful. If they're not successful today, it's highly unlikely they can be successful tomorrow knowing that the curriculum builds and builds. So what we want to do is remediate students in a way that uh, will help them to understand better the content matter and, and all of that moving forward. So the Mastery Practices Program, um, it's actually, the kids know it as the uh, Quiz Retake Policy, or the Quiz Retake Program, Retakes, uh, was kind of developed with uh, a lot of, as Todd had said, a, a lot of things in mind. I, I took this to the Shoreline uh, Department Heads, we, we meet every uh, quarter or so, and we had an open discussion about what other schools were doing in terms of their retake policies, did they have retake policies, all of that. I brought that back home and I talked to our administrators about that. I talked to the teachers on board at my school about this policy and I did a lot of Google searching to see what other people are doing. And then I put together a program that I thought was fair across the board and really got to the essence of what we were trying to do, which was you know, really take hold of those kids that were really not doing that well and push them forward towards mastery. So our program uh, provides a safety net to students who may not have been fully prepared for assessment. And that could be for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you know, and I talk to the kids about that. I understand you have lives outside of school. You have sports, you have, you know, whatever it is that you are involved in, clubs. You, some students will even say, I forgot there was a quiz, whatever the case may be. And then some are just struggling with the math and never got the help that they needed. So I wanted to provide that to them. It also allows students the opportunity to improve upon and demonstrate new learning. It's not good enough just to say, okay, you didn't get that, let's just keep going. Forget about it, we're just gonna move on. Because you know what, it does come back. In mathematics especially, if you're learning Algebra 1, you know you're gonna need it for Algebra 2. If you're learning even Algebra 1, that's gonna come back in calculus later on, you know, if, if they do take calculus. Um, but even in geometry, there's a lot of algebra and geometry, so it all builds. So what we're trying to do is, is demonstrate um, for the students that new learning. It holds students accountable for their own learning because this is an optional program. We don't force this upon any of our students. They need to come to their teachers to say, I need a little bit of help here. Can you help me? Is it okay for me to retake this? I am going to do this, that, and the other thing to help myself 
you need to help me as well. So it really it gives that uh, entitlement to the student so they can then um, come to the to the uh, to the I'm sorry to the teachers um, and um, and ask for the help that they need. And again, as Todd said, it keeps parents and, guard and guardians informed of its use. I sent a letter out, actually all my teachers do, to uh, all the parents at the beginning of the school year, sometime in September, that talks about the program, including the specifics. And when a student wants to make use of the program, uh, they get a, a sheet from their teacher. They take it home and get it signed by their parents. So the parents are always informed of what's going on. As Todd had mentioned, we use this for all our classes, and they're all just listed there, uh, across all levels, which includes honors, college prep, and general level. I didn't want to touch the AP Calculus because I felt that that really is a college course, and I really, I, I just didn't want to kind of mess with that. So I, I left that out, but the rest of them, uh, this is up for grabs. So in terms of um, this program, as soon as we go over a quiz with a student, if the student feels that they didn't do that well, and it's really designed for the student in like the D or F range, uh, although some students in the low C range can really take advantage of this program as well, they can come to their teacher and say, I, I, need, I need some help on this. Uh, can you sit with me? Can I, can I have some extra help? And I, I really, really want to do better and show you that I can. And I want to try again, you know, that kind of thing. So the student will get a retake form from their teacher. The first thing the teacher does is they put a date on that form uh, and then gives it to the student. They need to answer three reflective questions and obtain a parent guardian signature. We ask them to answer questions such as, um, the, the questions include, what happened? Why weren't you fully prepared for this quiz? And I want to hear from the student what they think. And some will write out say, I didn't study. Or I forgot it was a quiz. Or I was tired. Or but some will say, you know, I studied A, B, C. I forgot to study D. Whatever it might be. Or I really, really realize after taking this quiz that I really need more help than I thought. And it's good to hear from the kids and hear it from their perspective. You know? Um, they need to complete any outstanding assess assignments, homework in other words, that led to that assessment. Maybe that's part of the reason why they didn't understand in the first place. They have to make quiz corrections on a separate sheet of paper and then go over those quiz corrections with their teacher. They should be also doing side by side with that, obtaining extra help from the teacher, uh, sitting down with them to see what went wrong and how we can, how we can analyze to figure out what is the problem here. Um, and then they need to complete the requirements. They have a two-week window to do that. How are the grades affected? Uh, we came up with an acronym, of course. <laughs> QRA stands for Quiz Retake Average. So what we do is we take that first quiz and we average it with the retake. It's a pure average, but we cap it off at 80%. And so that's why I had said previous that the D's and F's, you know, as soon as I give back a quiz, I remind the students that this is available, especially for those in the D and F range. And I tell my students, if you're in the low C's, 70, 72, 74, come see me. Let's sit down. Let's analyze what your mistakes were, because maybe you can, can get the 80% as well. And, you know, in the end, I just want to make sure that these kids are understanding the material. And this makes a, it's a great program because a lot of the kids will take advantage of it because they want to improve their grades. So it's like the carrot that I'm dangling. Hey, you know what? I really want them to learn. They really want the grades. So it really it puts those two things together, I believe, very well. So Mastery Practices has helped many students to continue to be successful in their study of mathematics where new learning is really predicated on prior knowledge. We've used this, as Todd had said, about three years. I piloted it in two different courses three years ago. Last year was the first year that it ran in all our courses. And over the course of the whole year, there was a little over 200 retakes for the year, of which, yeah, of which only 16 students didn't improve upon their grade for whatever reason. So I really feel that it's working. I feel that it helps to open the lines of communication between the parents, the students, um, the teachers. It gets the students back to us so we, so we can sit down and work with them a little bit more. And it, the incentive for them is an improved grade. So that's the program. I think it's a great program. Any, any questions for 
Ms. Daniel? Um, I just have a question. It has yes. been very successful in the high school. Is that something that you could see? I mean, I know you're not an intermediate school teacher, but is that something that the younger kids could, you know, do? Seventh, eighth grade. Um, it, I guess it's. I don't see why they couldn't, but I can't. I can't speak, speak for yeah. for them <laughs> to see how they're running that program. Um, that's something that I could talk to them about, and I'm more than you know. Like Todd had said, I brought that to one of our leadership team meetings to let the other departments know that we were mm -hmm. doing. And I have actually had one of the science teachers come to me uh, on the side to say, "Tell me about this program because I really think it could work with my course." So it, it, it's starting to open those gates a little bit and to trickle it down to middle school. I mean, I'm more than willing to talk to anyone over there that that would want to. So just curious. Yeah. Thank you. There's also a, another positive piece which I don't want to get lost, which I know Todd and I really appreciate, is the fact that you know if a student does not pass material and then they move on, I mean they're really behind. Right. And that leads to disengagement, which leads to <coughs> behavior. A lot of times students uh, will become disengaged, will, will act out because they're frustrated with the material and they don't know how to verbalize it. So this is really the way for students to learn how to navigate through that academic challenge, which translates to all disciplines. So it's, it's just a really um, nice program for students that utilize it, um, and I think that you know it's really thoughtful how it's mapped out, and, and it does have effects with behavior piece as well. But just, yeah. And this is done on the teacher's time. This is above and beyond yeah. um, the expectations of what goes into a class preparation. They meet with them during their prep times and study halls, and and uh, so. Yes. Kudos to the entire team for doing that. Yes. It's a program that was outcomes-based education back in the 80s, and it was a good practice then, and, it, and it's found its way back in. Because at the end of the day, what does the grade represent? If the student has things going on in their lives, and they're not able, and there's a lot of math phobic kids, as we've mentioned, um, that, that need that extra support, encouragement, and connection with the teacher to have that opportunity to earn up to an 80 in that class. At the end of the day, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. Successful, confident students, you know, moving through our system, so. Do you find job. a lot of students take advantage of it? Uh, like I said, we had about 200. Uh, it, I push it as a teacher, you know what I mean? And I really think that the teachers that push it more and talk about it more get more kids to come. Yeah. So as I, as, and I tell all my teachers during department meetings, talk it up, talk it up. If yeah. you talk, the more you talk it up, and is it, if they see their friends doing it, they're gonna wanna do it too. It's, that, it's that's that trickle really effect, yeah. right? So I think in the, cla in, in the classes where they're talking about it more, you're gonna get, uh, you know, 20 students, 30 students per term, you know, and, you know, I'm going back home to tell my son about this program. Like, I don't ever want to see you. Better it. Get <laughs> report cards are out two days before I go, can I do some extra credit? Yeah. And, and it always I always said to myself, where were you a month ago? Where were you three weeks ago? Because I really could have helped you. Right. And then we analyze and say, well, you missed three, three assignments, so there's part of your grade. And missing those assignments really hurt your scores. Geez, you should have came to me earlier. Mm -hmm. This is a way to get to the kids yeah. earlier, to say, hey, you, you didn't do well, but come you know, yeah, I'm seeing just all you have to say is I need help. That's what I'm asking. And I'll take your writings, you know. Well, well like Mr. Gwood said, you know, this, you know, I'm not going to pick on history. It was definitely not my best subject. But you do, you do a unit on Africa. Okay. You bombed it, whatever. You move on. Math, you build on that. You know, if you don't understand this concept, you're not getting to the next and the next. You know, and it's, it's really important. Yeah. So yeah. I think it really needs to look be looked at starting it in the middle school because the, the steps are there. So if they're already in high school and they're struggling, it's so much harder to get caught up. So if there's some way to get this or see about getting it implement, implemented earlier, um, the kids are only going to reap the benefits of it. And we might not see as many kids at the high school level looking for the retake if it's initiated younger because they're going to get caught up and master those skills. Because they're better understanding. Absolutely. Yeah. Or Thank you so even, much for doing this. Yeah. For I taking the initiative. The, the growth of the middle school piece with that, it, it becomes like any other thing that they see at the high school. It's not a shock to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So when they're yeah. exposed to it in 6th, 7th, 8th grade, we've been doing this for three years. Now yeah. in high school, this is it's no different than your cell phone yeah. policy or anything yeah. you do. When, right. when they get it earlier and they do it often. Yes, well, even at the yeah. first level, you have them taking algebra one, which is going to build on 
geometry the following year. So at like the eighth grade level, if you have kids doing <coughs> pre-algebra, that builds yes. big time. I mean, right. it all builds, but I noticed like that's where the really important stuff comes. So even if you yeah. can get it into the middle school, because you do have some kids that are taking that algebra one. Right. as eighth grade, right. and then that does go right into the high school. I mean, it's yes, supposed right. to be supposed to be a, and I had to laugh because when I first listened to you, and this is just me being me, how you're like, oh yeah, we push the kids going through, and I'm like, push, and then I'm listening to it. It's like, no, you're not pushing. You're motivating, you're teaching, you're learning. It, it's anything <coughs> but pushing, right. you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Just, and at times we have to back up. Yeah, and it's, it's getting that foundation. If you don't have that foundation, it's going to crumble. And I think, um, I mean, this is kind of old school. I mean, I think this is what we used to have when we were kids, in a way, you know? And I think it's, I think it's fabulous. I commend you for coming up Thank with you. this because you, you don't want kids failing. And you, you know, when you're looking at a whole test, it's easier to look at, you know, three or four questions that you get. Okay, you got this, yeah. you know, right. you, but you got to look at maybe. Mm -hmm. These things, when it's a, mm -hmm. just a test after test, it's 20 things you're looking at. So when you can really pinpoint and say, okay, well, you can retake the ones you got wrong, right. you can really actually have them study and learn, yeah. which is what the whole and, and process we, is. And we can help them analyze, well, what is the problem? Right. I bet you might have gotten a 50 or 60, but what is the problem? Is it a lot right. of little mistakes, or is it a big concept you're missing? And it's so much easier to figure that out one-on-one -on -one yeah. when the student comes to us for help one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one as part of this program. Yep, and breaking it down. Yep, great. Fabulous. I mean, that's how you have success, even as adults, that's what we need. I mean, with Common Core, you guys weren't just thrown into it. It was broken down and talked about, and great. yeah, great job. Thank you. You're now, this is going to segue into our uh, Smart Student Balance teacher. SAT, so we keep the lights off. We're going to shift gears, yeah. and we're going to continue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, just so the board knows, this is going to go um, out on the website, and we will send it to you um, electronically so you have this. Um, did you get paper copies tonight, Ms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Everyone got paper copies? Yeah. Perfect. So I will go through, um, I will probably skip some slides and go through highlights. Um, what I will do probably is as I skip them, go through them so you can see them. I color code them so honestly, at a two second glance, you can kind of see what I want you to see first. Um, so as Scott mentioned, this kind of moves on from what's happening in the classroom when we talk about how students are achieving in our Smarter Balance scores, um, as well as our SAT. Science this year, because it was a pilot test for the new NGSS testing, um, is not counted in school accountability for the 17-18 school year. So this is, speaks to Smarter Balance and SATs. So this is, to the first two slides, I'll, I'll spend just a few seconds on. The 2018 Smart Balance English Language Arts grades 3 through 8 average. These are for students who have met level 3 and 4, which is the benchmark, or, or if you will, the proficiency level that the state uses. We are in the exact same position um, that we have been in for the last two or three years, meaning that we are almost dead in the middle. That is also true for mathematics. Um, we are one down from the middle, but above state average, and again, right where we have that. And I say this because um, there are, and Scott will speak to it in a little bit, we have been trying it and with decreasing budgets and everything else to really make sure that our students have the best opportunities. It's difficult in those situations. We keep trying things and it's hard to infuse change. Um, we've been very fortunate that Scott will talk about the grant we received that, that really hopefully will impact these scores more than we've ever seen before. There's so. one thing that's important when, when we're comparing uh, the towns around us, there's only one in our dirt, and it, it's just Clinton. So you'll see us um, similar to Clinton in many areas. Um, when, as we get into more of the, the breakdown of the data and analysis, we'll include the dirt results for you. Because I think it's important for you when you compare, you want to see our, our reference group that we're in, and then the reference group that is around us, surrounding us, okay? So each of the slides is the same pattern to language arts and math grades through three through eight. I have all our progressions through the years of 2015 through 2018, 2015 being the inaugural year of Smarter Balance testing on outside of the field test. So 
Um, until this year, our grade three students were, were having great success in comparison to the average of the state. So when we look at this, obviously we look at what's changed about grade three. So in the <laughs> curriculum, um, are we providing students with the same amount of support? And this is what we do and how we look at these numbers. So the next thing I do for each of these, and this is on your, when you look at the booklets that you have, you'll have how we've done from 2015 to 18 on the top page and on the bottom page of the two-page spread, you'll see the comparison um, for the area towns. So we dropped though for 2018. And we so did. Is one like the end of the year or are they all fall? There, no, they, this is all a May test. It's, it's a March oh, it's through okay. May. Oh, yeah, this is a smart amount. So it's all the same exact time. Yes, all the same time, different kids. Yeah, because we yeah. dropped over yeah. 10%. Yeah. Right? So the three yeah. three separate grades before that. So obviously right now going from 63% last year to 51 this year, we're going to dig down into that data for the grade three. They're different test takers, but we're able to look at the teacher, the teacher that had success, what that teacher did, the individuals in that class on, on, on three separate tests leading up to this. So we'll be able to see, okay, this is what this teacher needs to work on. And, and, and they are different kids. You know, I mentioned earlier, you know, the last year's senior class um, scored higher on their SATs than this current senior class. Right. It's just the makeup of the group. So, so what regional school at uh, District 13? That's Durham. 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 Thank you. Durham. So what you will see in fourth grade, however, is that we've been able to increase um, a little for math. So again, we're in Third grade, the students went down. In fourth grade, oh, that's great. In fourth grade, the, they went up. Oh, it's all the LA. I'm sorry, I have to get to math in a minute. Right, well, those third graders are now fourth graders. So. Now they are, absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, like you can see. Right. This is a separate group of tests. What happened in grade four? <coughs> they went up a little. So, so they, were, they were flat line 59 through 60, 61. And now we're, we're dead center again. If you look at, Tracy, you're going way too fast. Go back. <laughs> I'm trying to so, I, so when you look at, and we're measuring uh, districts around us, we're, we're obviously 59.5. Clinton is at 59.6. Durham is at 60.9. You're looking at similar size districts. It's a couple of kids testing out and getting that level to get to the 70th percentile for the bigger districts, Madison, North Haven, uh, and Guilford. Um, they score significantly higher. I mean, we're, we're separated by a few towns here by percentage, percentage points. Do we have a lot of kids that don't test, that still opt out? We do not. I, we have what I would consider to be the average. It was the eighth graders from two years ago that were our last group that had a significant number of students opt out. Okay. So grade five um, increased a little. Yeah, that's what I was so did the state, you know, those are another things I look at. I look at the discrepancy between the state average and how our students are doing, whether we made, whether we gained ground on the state average or not. And then obviously, again, we look, okay, five below, five above, right in the middle. Grade six, ELA, again, as Scott mentioned, for us, we look at this clear indicator. Um, and you'll see this right. was a significant dip. This group, yeah. this group went, you know, over the last three years have gotten to 63 percent, and then this last year, well, grade level, not grade, 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 level. grade level, exactly to 46. So that's a, that's something that we're going to obviously focus. And you'll see course. later on. I do the slides where I follow the same kids over there. Yeah. So there's two separate yeah. things yeah. to look at. And, and again, as Scott mentioned, what this does is really lets us look at teachers and classes and supports and where the supports are, where we need them, mm -hmm. um, which groups of students really need them, because when we look at the same grade over time, that's what remains constant, the teachers. So this is our current seventh grade class? Yes. So this and is honestly, this is where we're going to really This is an area of concern. The seventh grade teachers um, with their group last year were able to gain a little ground on the state. So while the state only went up 0.10%, we went up 2% from 17 to 18. Again, seventh grade in comparison to towns, now we're moving a little towards that right side that we'd like to see. Eighth grade, 
get made ground compared to the state. Third grade math indicates area of concern. Fourth grade math. So as you can see, if you remember what our fourth grade ELA scores look like and our fourth grade math scores look like, they are being a little round in fourth grade. But again, it's the same group of kids for that fourth grade right now. Mm -hmm. Fifth grade. Sixth grade. The math scores traditionally throughout the state are lower than the ELA scores. You'll see that. Mm -hmm. on, on It'll be more apparent in the other slides. When the state average is in the 40s versus in the 60s when you compare the two. And that's true for both SATs and Smarter Balance. Math is at a much lower level, even though that benchmark rate for math or the achievement score they want you to achieve is higher than that language arts. Mm -hmm. So there's our current set in math, too. Yeah. We did not perform well on, on both uh, assessments. That's the firm part of the firm. Well, I'm, I'm mad though they were able to sustain. Seventh grade, again, gained ground on the state average, as they did in language arts. And then eighth grade, for math. So this is what we were saying. So these are the same kids over time. When you look at their grade five, grade six, grade seven, and grade eight, same students. So purple is North Ranford, and the blue is the state average. So as you can see, that dip between fifth grade and sixth grade is not unique to North Ranford. And as I was mentioning in our curriculum subcommittee, um, you know, many of the schools that have different buildings that switch from fifth to sixth grade see a similar type of result in their testing. So this is the math, which has the opposite from fifth to sixth grade. ELA. Wow. And I will tell you that Matthew, he can speak to this as well. When we showed the North, uh, the intermediate school these scores at the beginning of the school year, the gasp that you just had, they had as well. So seeing this data is very impactful for teachers as, as well as obviously for parents and board members and teachers. So is there a math leader that's the other? Similar... Oh, are you talking about this slide? No, this is is there, no, but is there a math leader similar to what the high school has in yes. high school? Yep, in a language, the language arts leader is the same for 612, and then the high school math is in school no. math for two different people. Okay. But it is a high school math teacher that is the department leader for the middle school. Okay. I'm math. sure where she gasped. <laughs> math for... Grades three, four, five, six for the same class, which is our class of 2024. Class of 2025. So again, we see a peak at, at, at grade five, well, coming from the left side. Our intention, obviously, is to continue to ascend, um, and, and we hope that we'll be able to achieve that this year. And then when I look at these things and I see that between third and fourth grade and again in fifth grade, it's, it, although we had a steeper decline, if you see the general shape of the graphs for the state and North Granford are similar. When we look at this, we start to talk about testing items and, okay, so if the entire state went down from third grade to fifth grade in mathematics, for that group of kids that will graduate in the year 2025, what is it that's happening? What can we do? Are there changes? Are there trends that are happening in education itself? Or can there be things that we can tease out and address in the district? That being a relatively flat. So one of the new metrics that the state uses is expected growth. They have expected growth based on where you achieve. It's not everybody grows 30 points or 20 points 
from year to year as an SAT. The state has a chart, so if you score low band one in grade four, they expect you to grow 30 points, but if you score high band three, you're supposed to increase 40 points, so they have that. And what this tells us is how many of our students hit the expected growth from the year 2017 testing to the year 2018 testing. So uh, we are in dark purple for math and light purple for ELA. So our growth in math, zero grades four, five, and six, surpasses that in ELA, but then starts to pick up in ELA in grades of seven and eight. These are what percentage our average student reached of that target growth. So if you were supposed to grow 100 points and you met 66% of that, it would be 66 points of the 100 that you grew. And this is just another view of it. This one compares us to Connecticut. ELA. SATs, um, obviously we look at one class in the school day SAT, this is the junior class from last year, which is the class of 2019. So here are state averages and our averages. What is the SAT now? I mean, I haven't seen. It's the same SAT that we took when we were younger with some modifications. Is there a writing component to it now? No longer. Okay. When it wants to be the state accountability test, the state doesn't give that piece of it. There is still an optional piece that you can pay more for and go take it on another day. Oh, okay. But because this is an accountability test for the state of Connecticut, they do not use the writing piece for this proctoring. So we're, we're average with the state with the 560, and obviously we're, we're 10 points behind uh, math right now. This is our current senior class. So what we look at is, okay, so where are most of our students achieving? And for ELA, well, it's evidence-based reading and writing, EDRW, we have many students at level three, which is meeting the benchmark, which for language arts on the SAT for the state of Connecticut is a 480. They expect students to score 480 to hit the benchmark. Here's where we are comparatively. Again, almost, we are right in the middle again. Mathematics. So again, this information is interesting to us. We look at level two, and then we actually look at the students that were at level two and how far away were they. The benchmark for mathematics in the state of Connecticut is 530. So while the benchmark for Evidence-based reading and writing is below what the national average is. The benchmark for math is higher than what the national average is. This is the growth of the class of 2019 from the PSAT 9, which we give to all ninth graders. We give all 10th graders the PSAT 10. All juniors take the PSAT National Merit Qualifying Scholarship Qualifying Exam. And then in 2018, just as in the others, the school day SAT, which is an April or March test, depending on what the state schedule is. So for the PSAT SAT, this is for evidence-based reading and writing. There are standard growth that they expect students to make from grades 9 to 10, 10 to 11, and 11 PSAT to 11 SAT. They are 20 points, 30 points, and 20 points respectively. As you can see, our students outpace the growth dramatically in ninth grade to 10th grade, are about on par from 10th to 11th, and 11th grade between PSAT and SAT. We are looking to see what else we can do to help students grow. And our math scores show the same. And again, this is for this group. And this is when that's for the school day SAT. It's not a super score, correct? No, we don't use a super score because the state doesn't. Right. So 
So if kids take it on their own on the outside, they may submit that highest score that they achieved that wouldn't count for us. Or combined. Right, this is a student achievement report. This is the one that has is reported by the city. So that's that. So I would say that we can skip to the SIG grant yeah, right now. We'll talk about that because um, it segues right in. And again, so, so our thought is that we've really been taking small steps and trying to make whatever changes we can to help students succeed. Part of that is trying to make sure that we have the funding to make changes and, and really start to change the landscape in our grantor. Yeah, All right, so uh, Tracy, thank you. Um, obviously, when, when, you, when you put data up on the board, um, it gives you the opportunity to look at um, some specific things and areas that we need to focus on. Obviously, grades, the current grade seven students um, right now, looking at their data as a group is something that I know will be a lot of energy spent on that. Uh, the good news is that we have the resources over the next three years to the tune of $1.5 million um, through the school improvement grant that we were awarded this last year. We're already well into the professional development. Patrick Flynn came um, earlier this week. Our entire administrative team spent two days looking at um, methodology and teacher evaluation, um, how we observe the teaching, how we evaluate the teaching. Uh, they, he then will go in and meet with the teachers at the middle school, and they will start that process so everyone's on the same page for expectations. Uh, a big part of that grant is the accountability piece. So we've been assigned a uh, mentor from the state of Connecticut who's going to work with Tracy, who's going to be in our school system. She already has been on several occasions. She'll continue to be um, in our school system. So she'll be working with us collectively. Uh, these are things we would never be able to do. Um, I'm just going to put it right out there. The funding for the two days of professional development was very expensive. For us to be able to purchase uh, 225 Chromebooks for all seventh grade students and two carts of 60 for um, our special ed programs gives us a leg up on the technology aspect of it. We also were infusing the uh, Fontes Pinnell um, literacy intervention programs for grades six, seven, and eight, which focuses on and is going to highlight the things that we're seeing as weakness areas. For mathematics, illustrated math is another six to eight. It's the books and the training. These people are going to come in, they're going to train the trainer model with our teachers, with our administrators, and they're going to give us five to six hundred thousand dollars worth of support each year for the next three years. Now, you know dollars and cents when we talk about a $30 million budget. With us, an increase of one percent is equal to about three hundred thousand dollars. So we're saying we're getting over one percent in our middle school each year more than 1% for the next three years. Okay, so that's exciting. Yeah. The other that's thing we're talking about is the coaching model. We too have two coaches um, that are working, we're working grades three through six. Meg Peterson and uh, Marissa Levine moved up to sixth grade as well. So now we have the sixth grade covered. In January, we're gonna hire two more instructional coaches, two more coaches that will do seventh and eighth grade specifically, and we're looking to hire a .5 reading specialist as well to work at the middle school. We wouldn't be able to do this. So the good news is we're sitting here, and when we do the gasp, we have a plan in place. We know the end result when we stand here and we talk about our seniors when they exit our schools and they they have what it takes to be a productive member of society and to go on and pursue to do what they want to do, be, be a college found, the military, or the workforce. This is going to give us a leg up to now really look at how we're doing things and really attack grades six, seven, and eight. So it's exciting. And, and, and I'm saying this to you so to, to be patient. This is going to grow over time. Um, we're going to report to you. We have to report to the board everything that we're doing, all of the professional development, all of the outcomes as they as they come through. Staff members are going to get stipends to come in before school and after school to do professional training to work with students. So there is a carrot there. Um, and we're not asking people to do anything outside of what the union allows us to do, and we're going to compensate people as well to do it through the grant. We're also looking at the schedule change between the middle and high school. Uh, Don, Tracy, and I looked, sat to a webinar the other day. We're looking at part of this SIG grant, a professional company that does this, 
that has done it in um, Connecticut with four different districts that we're looking at to come down and look at our scheduling matrix, look at the language in our teachers' contracts to possibly better design a schedule that fits the needs of our 6th through 12th grade students. Okay? There's going to be some changes. We know that. We've had the conversations with the administrators. The charge of this company will be for the betterment of 6th through 12th through this SIG grant. Kids getting the courses they want to take, getting to load up on courses that they want to take, not be handcuffed by a schedule, us being able to share staff back and forth and to offer more opportunities for kids. That's all exciting news. Yeah, that's and that great. all comes through the SIG grant. And I know you heard about it in Tracy's uh, presentation. So that being said, um, we'll continue to give you feedback on this as we move through. Um, it's kudos, it's a great accomplishment, and we're excited about it. But now the hard work begins. I have a really stupid question. There's no such thing. Um, oh, I know. That's what everybody says. But yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at. The um, this thing, whatever, like all these, all yes. these. Now, yes. I guess what my question is: Is there any way we can? Because you're looking at like a whole bulk yes. of of all the kids. So I guess my question is: Is there any way we could take like a few of the districts that are similar to ours and? see where each grade is placed, how can I put this, where each grade is placed like, I don't want to say level one, level two, because they don't have that. Well, they but do break it down by, they do. Each <laughs> level one in, in school In or each school, like in each school. So like we're looking at this, mm -hmm. and it's just bulking everybody together. And maybe this is just my brain working this way, and I don't know if there's any way to break it down, but like I know in, I'm going to use eighth grade just because I'm throwing it out there, mm -hmm. um, like they have an algebra, they have a pre-algebra. So um, yes, I, we have that. So, so is there any way to figure out where these other school districts, like not all of them, but like let's take Durham because Durham I think is close to us. Um, like Scott always <laughs> brings up Clinton, is there ever, is there a way to figure out like how many kids in Durham are taking algebra as opposed to North, and, and break it down that way instead so of I, just bulking everybody, our, or is that we, ridiculous? We can do our derby. Like I said before, if you want to look at <coughs> apples to apples, we will break our derby down once we have the information. We're not going to obviously put any name, but we can do score bands for how many kids were proficient, how many kids exceeded proficiency by numbers. So if we have 140 kids, you can look at 32, 60, 14, 22. But I'm looking I think at what she's asking is I do. You need to, I have that information about our students. So well, I look at our students, what teachers they have, what courses they're in. Right. What and then how do I know what Durham kids are taking? They grew. So Durham could never give me that information. So there's it could no could be identifiable depending on the class sizes. But what they could give me is saying that we have an algebra one class and we have a, a grade eight <coughs> math class. So, and I will tell you that almost, uh, probably 90% of the schools have it that way. They have it broken up, not all schools. But we can't get like how many kids are, cause I'm like, for me, I'm trying I to like bring this. Someone in the school district gives it to me. I would, we, we do not have access to that so information for okay. anyone besides ourselves. Cause I just see this as such a group, like such a group thing. And I'm looking at some of these numbers and it's like, Gee, but I feel like we need to break it down even more, which is like what you're doing. I mean, we that's what you're, school, that's what you're doing when them. you're comparing it to other school. I would just like to see where they're at. Like if we have, I, I don't know, I'm just throwing a number out because I don't even know how many kids, but if we have like, let's say, 80 enrolled in Algebra 1, and then a district that's like the same size of others has like 100, 100, and so we can kind of see where it's... <coughs> So to me, courses, what yeah. courses? Like yeah, like like because oh, we're course looking no, because we're looking at all these, and I mean the scores are the scores, but to me it's is it a learning thing going on, and and I guess that's where I'm kind of hung up if if this is even making I don't even know what I'm trying to like so what I'm thinking what I'm saying. So basically, is it like tease it out? Yeah, like are we giving our kid like is. It, 
are we giving our kids, like, are we low on how, or what are our percentages for, like, algebra? You know what I mean? Like, our kids that are taking algebra, is it a normal percentage of, like, for what other, all these towns other towns, towns have? I got you. So, I mean, instead uh, of just throwing it. I just can't tell you how those kids scored. If those scores are scored better, them. if those are the kids that are medieval or not. I can, we can pull other towns to find out what, in terms of like if what you, classes they have, and they may give us the numbers, but I, I doubt that they Because just us looking at this, I just don't know if there's more to it than just scores, and I guess that's where I'm hung up on, because scores are scores, but I'm like, you know, what's Durham doing differently, that they're at like a 73.6% and we're at a 53 point zero. like I would have just personally thought without having this in front of me, that we would be comparable, because... And then I'm looking at it, and I'm like, well, not for nothing, if, like, you know, why wouldn't you go to Durham if it's Well, we're the only Durham D school. Yeah, they're not in the same Durham. They're not in the same Durham. They're ahead of us. It, it, right. it all comes down to per pupil expenditure. So my point being, when I started by saying, if you want to compare apples to apples, you have to look at our Durham, who spends about the same amount per student to look at. I mean. Madison, Guilford, right. are there above. Durham is higher than all of them. Really? Dur Dur Durham spends okay. upwards of, I, I want to say close to $20,000 or more on the per pupil expenditure. And I can get that for you and send it to you. But I think what you're but looking at is how many kids are taking algebra. Right, like where, like what? If, compared to another. Right, other like so, so maybe we can try to figure out like why we're, and I'm just throwing algebra out there as an example. <laughs> But, you know, why some of our grades are, some of our percentages are going down instead of just looking at it through the testing, um, you know, if, I don't know, if just... There are, there are other variables we can look at. Obviously, I, I know you're asking about algebra one, but that's only grade eight. There are no well, and I'm just throwing it out there as an example because so, it was the only thing I could think of. But if you but go on to sixth grade, fifth grade, I mean, take anything. Um, you know, if there's a different, because I don't know what they use. I don't know if they use level or so. I don't want to, but I know, like, for eighth grade, it's pre-algebra, algebra, algebra, so I'm not, so I'm being politically correct. But I don't know, like, in fourth grade, if there's two or three different levels of something. And where we fall in that, as opposed to Clinton, I think um, Scott said we're close to, or I, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious to see where where this percentage is, because these are tests, but tests are one thing, and in the school system, it's another thing. Like in real life, in school, it's something different, and I think that's more what I'm concerned about is real life, not test scores. I know sometimes people feel like throwing money at, at it is not the answer, but it is shown that the towns that have a higher PPE, <coughs> class sizes could be smaller. They could have um, more help in the classrooms, which, which helps the grades. You know, we, we don't really know what it is. I, I, you know, sometimes throwing money at, at the problem isn't the solution, but it, it, with a million and a half dollars over the next three years, it's going to help us with coaches, things we've been trying to get into our budget for years that we haven't been able to. We're yes. just not right. in our kids. Right. But I would still like to know, before all that, where our kids mm. fit in, like... Just grade, like just where they're placed, placement wise in each grade. Because I look at this and it's, to me, I mean, this is state, this, you know, this is where we need to go. But to me, it's, it could be deeper than this. And, you know, to see where everybody stands through standardized testing, I would just like to know in like real life, and I get what you're saying, there are a lot of variables, but even knowing those variables. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, can help. I would still like to know, like, you know, do for so, like- you know what might be a good suggestion, Carol, is kind of bullet what you're looking for and send it to Tracy and she could bring it up in curriculum meeting and we could drill down there. Oh, absolutely. Would that be helpful? Sure. Okay. That way you could kind of go through it and fine tune it there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We're going to uh, move on. I need you to vote on the teacher uh, and administrative evaluation plans that were discussed earlier tonight. Um, those uh, are aligned with the State uh, Department of Education on how we evaluate our teachers and administrators. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve the 2018-2019 North Bramford Teacher Evaluation Plan as submitted. Discussion? 
Somebody second it? Yeah. 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 Discussion? Roll call vote. Chairman Papa Holzer? Yes. Vice Chair Anafrio? Yes. Secretary Sienna? Yes. Jana Balsamo? Yes. Carolyn Candelora? Yes. Cynthia Rice? Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the 2018 2019 North Brantford Administration Evaluation Plan as submitted. Discussion? Roll call vote. Chairman Papa Holzer? Yes. Vice Chair Anafrio? Yes. Secretary Sienna? Yes. Jana Balsamo? Yes. Carolyn Candelora? Yes. Cynthia Rice? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tracy's also going to talk about aggregate educator evaluation data that was sent to the Connecticut State Department of Ed in September and any information that you may need on our management system. So, um, by state law, I give you each year how our teachers, including administrators, so it's our educator evaluation plan. Um, did our plan and what data system we're using. So last year we had 177 certified teachers within our evaluation plan, 173 total were evaluated. Um, the four that were not had a mixture of medical and maternity leaves if they're not here for a significant part of the school year. We do not evaluate them. We're allowed so many um, passes, if you will. And we are allowed to exclude so many people. So we had four people that were not included. Of the 173 that were evaluated, 148 district-wide were proficient and 25 exemplary. Um, the professional educator data management system that we use is Frontline. Um, it is associated with all, well, many of the other products that we use, and, and I can speak to this as well. ASOP, Apple Tracks, RTIM, IEP Direct, um, PDMS, teacher evaluation, Frontline owns them all. Um, so it is one of the only systems that is allowed to use both the CCT, which is the Connecticut framework, um, as well as the Danielson framework. So we use it, one, for that reason, but also because it integrates with almost every software platform the district uses. Any questions on that? No, thank you. Okay, uh, we've already talked about the school improvement grant, so we'll move over and pass that. The, uh, I've been sending you emails about the uh, economic development coordinator, Roger Solway, and I have met several times, and we have met with Honeywell on three occasions and Sound Manufacturing on two. And it's really to condense this. We're looking at uh, ways for our students to have the opportunity to do apprenticeships within uh, their high school years. and. We're looking at um, skill sets for both college and non-college bound students so that they are applicable to get jobs when they graduate in the field of engineering uh, and or manufacturing. Roger Solway uh, is a breath of fresh air with uh, his energy and his passion for trying to get manufacturing back into the state of Connecticut. So uh, the tech team at the high school and the administrators have uh, been meeting with us, Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Rice, and obviously our uh, two, two administrators. And we're hoping that we're going to get some funding um, from the Manufacturing Association to purchase some things. We're also going to use the Perkin, Perkins grant money to purchase some things and try to embed that in the curriculum for next year. Uh, so that's exciting, and I'll keep you apprised of that as we go along. I also sent you an email from um, Trifecta Ecosystems. We have a grant that um, we are going to start in January. Uh, from the uh, Water Authority working with um, this company. We're going to do um, aquaponics in the greenhouse. 40% of the greenhouse will be dedicated to aquaponics. We'll be able to grow year-round now in the winter months. We're going to use koi fish as our fertilizing fish um, in the greenhouse so that we'll be able to reproduce water to uh, provide nutrients to the plant system. So we're excited about this. This is going to really be a boom, I think, for our science classes um, and give a lot of kids an opportunity to get in and be a part of this. We're also looking to align with the um, school to farm program and be in with the technical schools. This person thinks that we have the capacity to do that with our quarter acre lot, our raised beds, and our greenhouse that we can um, perhaps be um, grant ready for some other things too. So those are all good things. Who's writing all the grants, Scott? 
Who what? Who's writing all of the grants? Are various people, or the, is it? I'm actually working with Eric Francis, the CEO of Trifecta. So okay. we're partnering with him, and, and he's doing that. He's an entrepreneur that is a co-owner co of the company. And I met with him a couple of years ago, and we just didn't have the funding to do it then. Mm -hmm. and, and now the water company is going to provide nice. us the funding, so it's good. So we'll, we'll keep you apprised of that as well. Um, I did. I'm going to send copies of the email that I sent to you um, for the measurable goals for all of my goals. So you have that. You have an electric form now, and now you have it in paper form as well. And Scott will give us an update mid-year. Mid-year, I'll come back and update you. He was in our budget and he's going to give us an update mid-year on where he is at the goals and then at the end of the year right before we evaluate so that it's an easy, you know, did you meet your goal when kind of right. keep right. it as we move along. So if everyone could just review these, so if they have any questions, now is the time to ask them, not when we're evaluating them. Right. Fair? Fair. Did you say fair? Fair. Yeah, I'm like fair, fair right? Foul, fair, fair. Yeah. Um, community Roundup is coming up, as you know, uh, that, that's been done for several years. It's a great community effort by the intermediate school. All of the uh, food collected goes to the food pantry, and that's going to take place on <coughs> Saturday, October 27th. So if you have any um, candy goods that are not expired, please leave them out, and, uh, and they'll come around and, and bag them and take them out. Um, community reports and negotiations. Uh, we're going to table. Are we tabling that table. to our next meeting? We're, yeah. we're, table. we're meeting with the administrators beginning next week, and then we'll table the rest of it. We have a lot of data that we've um, requested, and then I'm asking you to specifically send uh, anything to me that you may have questions on, and then I'll have that for our next meeting. Don, should we make a motion, or no, we don't need to? Just no. That's what I thought. Okay. And that's it for me. Okay. Uh, subcommittee meeting of minutes, budgets, operations. Don, do you want to give the budget? Um, sure. We have, uh, well, we discussed a number of things. The, um, the current budget, obviously, we're very early in the year, so there are no areas of real concern. Um, we looked at a planning calendar for the 1920 budget. Yay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And one of the things that um, we're going to do is at our next administrative meeting um, is to develop our budget priorities so that we can then share those with the board in the November budget and operations meeting. Um, we discussed a number of other things, uh, summer work. Um, we discussed, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, high school renovation uh, and where we might be going with that. And Marie Diamond was there, and she shared with us some information from the town um, regarding the five-year plan. And, and I also distributed the information that we had submitted on the board side for that five-year plan. And I think that's about it. Thank you. Curriculum. We got, we got a whole lot of curriculum. I think we covered it. Yeah, we covered it. Um, <laughs> Tracy just went over um, at the curriculum meeting. Um, just the um, grant we got, as Scott pointed out, and um, she gave us a graph that had um, assessment results that were um, proficient and developing. And the developing part is um, where she really looked at to get us um, up to par. So, and we talked about that tonight, which was the coaches. Um, the reading intervention of no charge after school. I don't know if Scott brought that one up. I thought that was a good thing. Um, the Chromebooks. Um, and then next year we're looking at a math and reading program. Pension had a meeting. Did you have a policy meeting? Okay. No policy yeah, meeting. No, we're trying to schedule one for later in the month. Okay. ACES, Jen? Um, talked about um, leader help, the Leader Help projects on schedule. Um, we approved um, items to be purchased for the new building. Um, the, let's see, um, what else did we talk? Um, I'm sorry, the um, uh, executive director gave us goals. Um, we talked about um, the Mill, Mill Road schools being renamed, um, AC's Mill Elementary. 
um, and the Aces Mill Academy now because they divided the ages of the, the schools. Um, they also talked about a new program they're having at one of their schools they've implemented. It's uh, the school dedicated to um, children who suffer traumas. Um, they're implementing some new um, teaching programs to um, try to encourage learning. And um, one of the other things they were working on and discussing was um, their Looking at looking at to meet state standards about um, renaming how you um, keep children in holds. Um, you have to have different technologies. It's different. Um, they're changing what the definitions of those things are. So, just kind of variety of things. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, there was no building committee communications. We had it in September, not October. Right. We did have it so long ago. Now we did. We yeah. did. Ha we did have a meeting. I had notes for the last. <laughs> it was a good meeting. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it was fine. I think it. I think it mostly focused on on the um, talk about renovating. You know, possible renovation of a high and, school. And we talked a little bit about the NBIS roof. Right. Yeah. Right. There okay. was a wellness. Um, uh, we need to get that back on here. Yeah. Tell, tell us about it, Cindy. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cue. <laughs> uh, so, we discussed the plan to move forward with getting the Narcan in the buildings, the nurses needing to get trained on that still, and the, the doctor is hoping that it will be up and running by the next meeting, which will be in December. They were having... Um, there was discussion, uh, the doctor brought up a discussion of a drop box for drugs, but that would have to be discussed at, you know, with the police or it would be at the police station if it was something that could move forward for, like, a, so no one wouldn't be, I, I really didn't get that part of it, but there was discussion of a drug, bo drug box a drop box for drugs that would have to be at the police station for people who just want to get rid of drugs dispose. and dispose of them. Um, well, we won't be taking that to school. No. I, I, I honestly, I think I'm just going to be sweating my chin. No, oh, yeah, no, it, it would be at the police station. But, and so that was brought up to talk about and discuss and see if that's something that would want to be looked into further. Um, there is a psychologist now in each building. I don't know if that's new. That was discussed, though. Um, they were having a, this was like three weeks ago, so I'm sorry that that's I'm like, okay. that's how we were at the communication <laughs> meeting. Um, what else was there? There was discussion about e cigs because I guess that's big everywhere, but it's bigger now, right now, in the, the high school? Or uh, it's big everywhere. So middle school, right. high school, yes. and there's a lot of exploration going on with them with the thought that, oh, it's vaping, it's not going to harm us. Right. And so we, we're, we're doing a great job of bringing Yale in to educate not only our students, but our staff. And I know the administration has been very busy um, collecting devices and, <laughs> and notifying angry parents and then notifying the police department they violate our policy on smoking on school grounds. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind that all of our uh, restroom doors are open. We've, we've done that to um, see a decline in the ability for yeah. students to partake in those activities. So it's a challenge everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. It's all over the news how it's, 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 so it's tripling. We're, and We're working on that diligently. And the other thing that was discussed was the PE scores. Um, North Bradford is around the 53%, which is around standard, am I correct on that, or no? Uh, high school or middle school? No. Not so good. <laughs> <laughs> so and you want to be able to have 70 PE scores. The, yeah. the, yeah. the gym class? The standard test. The fitness course. Maybe. The fitness course. Yeah. The, hmm. So there was discussion as to maybe how to help get these kids back up. The push-ups, 
No, yeah. the push-up sit-ups in the pole or something like that. Oh, oh is, this the, is this the presidential thing? Is this the presidential? Oh, okay. So it's included in our accountability scores. Right. So when we determine whether what category our schools are, physical fitness test is one of 12 factors that's used to determine. Um, and English physical fitness. And, and, well, and there's different things. Greg, I know, has been working on a few things at the high school to address it. We have an issue with that, making sure all sophomores take it. So... There are things being done so to address it. There's, I mean, there's twofold participation is, is accounted in it, and then how students do on it. So participation, right. we want to make sure that all we account for all students. There are about 20 to 25 10th graders who are enrolled in a 10th grade PE um, or enrolled later in the year for a 10th grade PE for a variety of reasons with the scheduling. So we need to make sure that we capture those students. Um, so we came up with a plan this year, um, working with Ralph Shaw at the middle school, and the two B departments, uh, members of the high school, to make sure that we capture those students. We're going to be sending a letter out to their parents um, within the next week. Um, I met with each of those students to explain, you know, what, what the test involves, the four areas, um, and then our teachers are working to, to kind of stay in touch with them to give them a little bit of time. <coughs> Some of them like to sit and reach and, and, and um, corral some questions. Can be done before school. Can be done after school. Can be done in the study hall. Um, and then with the mile run, with the weather starting to get colder, we wanted to capture these kids a little bit sooner to give them an opportunity to do that. Um, the test window was all year, as opposed to last year where it was, it was certain segments of the year. So, um, do you ever hit up the athletic teams and have them do it as part of their um, practice, like part of a practice? I mean, a lot of the teams have to yeah, do a timed mile anyway. The majority of like those type of <coughs> athletes have to have the It is still a small percentage that aren't in there. Um, and we do need to have like a PE staff member there to make sure that we're recording those times and that they're doing it and that they're participating. And, and, and do the weightlifting kids take it too? If, uh, well, 10th grade doesn't have a weightlifting, right? It's 4, 6, 8, and 10. It's not just 10th graders. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so we have those, so those students are aware of who needs to take it. Okay. Um, and we're making, you know, a plan in place, and it is part of their goals to share and their evaluation plan as well. Hmm. So we make a motion to cancel all the buses and have the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One way or the other, we'll get them in shape. At the start of every class, do <laughs> jumping glass, hold plank for a minute, and then you come out. Yeah. Thanks for credit. Thanks for credit right there. Uh, New business? Yeah. Visitors and press? Still Good of the board. I haven't been to anything lately. All's good. Oh, well, good at the board. We have three schools that have gotten the exemplary, oh, the, award. the climate exemplary award, right? Right. I'm going to send, I'll send um, information. We can announce it, right? To talk yeah. about <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to CAS, or to, to talk about CAS for school climate. So now Jerome, to talk about, and NBIS have been awarded. Uh, that um, award. <laughs> I'm not saying anything they, else. <laughs> it's, it's from a site visit. They come in, they interview students, they interview staff. Uh, they look at uh, student data for suspensions and uh, in school. I mean, all of the things that go into school climate, what we're doing to reinforce, and obviously with all of our PBIS and our acronyms for you know rocks and, and circle and um, right. pride. It, 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 it's as important as any test data that we have, and I say that with all sincerity. You know, you can measure the, the, the data results, but kids feeling safe, kids feeling valued, kids feeling a part, kids participating, kids taking chances is what makes up what they measure. And for us to have three schools be recognized, it doesn't happen. And you can, I, I know I'm, I'm supposed to say that because I'm the superintendent, but it, it, it doesn't happen where you have three different schools in a small town get this award. And, uh, and I know there's gonna be letters coming and they'll speak to that. Um, you walk into those buildings and, and, and watch those kids engage and, and, and how they feel. And when there is a problem, how the administrators are trained to um, treat them with respect, treat them with dignity, and build them back up to move them forward. Um, that's why you get those awards. So kudos, great job, and um, I'll send you the, another picture. I took enough pictures tonight, I'll send you another one. So you have it. So that's good news. Really good news. Thank you. Thank you.
This was one of the better meetings in a long time, I'm going to say. We actually <laughs> talked. Yes, it is good of the board. We talked about students. We gave out some great awards to students. And, and we are going to move on while we're on happy note. So the next regular Board of Education meeting is scheduled for Thursday, November 15th, 2018. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye.